Hey everybody, Clifford Stummy here. I'm the Pop Song Professor, Lyrical Theorist. Welcome back. Everybody else, if you like deeper meanings in your music, you have come to the right channel. Today we are talking about Whatever It Takes by Imagine Dragons. They just released it. Quick side note, people outside my house working on my deck, do not worry about the weird extra noise. Sorry about that. Second thing, the song just came out yesterday, uh, so there's not a lot of opinions or ideas out there about it yet. So we are on the ground floor of this. Please comment your ideas about this song. I don't think it's terribly deep, but I think it's emotionally powerful. So that's kind of the tact we're gonna take. Third thing, do not forget to comment an Imagine Dragon song that I should explain next time. I think Hopeless Opus is winning on a different video. I just haven't had a chance to do that one. Then this song came out, so we're explaining this one. Uh, that being said, let's jump into these lyrics. Verse one, falling too fast to prepare for this tripping in the world could be dangerous. So going out into the world, it's a tough place. People wanna get you. He says everybody circling is vulturous, negative, nepotist. So they're calling him out or wanting him to not succeed. We heard a lot of this in Thunder where he strove beyond what other people were expecting him to be able to do. And he went and did what he wanted to do anyway. Then we get into everybody waiting for the fall of man where they're really waiting for the fall of him. This is a lot of poetic language used to create the sort of feeling or idea, praying for the end of times, hoping they could be the one I was born to run, I was born for this. So people know that the end of times is coming, something like that. Um, not a reference to Satanism or the apocalypse. They just, it's, it's epic. It's just supposed to sound epic. Uh, but I'd love to hear you guys' opinions and thoughts of that. I'm open to being convinced. Uh, but he was born for this. He knows that he is one who can thrive in this world where there are high stakes. He says, run me like a racehorse, hold me like a ripcord, break me down and build me up. Word upon your lip, letter that you rip, break me down and build me up. He wants to go through the struggle so that he can be stronger. A theme that we saw a lot of in Believer where it's all about pain and how he is thankful for that pain because it made him who he is. Then we get into the chorus where he says, whatever it takes, and that's the line of the song. And that's what he's saying again, whatever it takes, I want to go through whatever pain is necessary for me to get to the point that I wanna be at because I love the adrenaline in my veins. I do whatever it takes because I love to feel, I love how it feels when I break the chains. He likes to overcome these expectations and these limits that other people thinks that he has. Whatever it takes, you take me to the top. I'm ready for whatever it takes. He's got that adrenaline in his veins and he's ready to succeed. We get into verse two. Always had a fear of being typical, looking at my body, feeling miserable, always hanging on to the visual. I want to be invisible. I don't know exactly what disease it is, but it is a pretty awful one that Dan Reynolds, the lead singer of Imagine Dragons has. And so that might be the reference to looking at his body. He's afraid of being typical and not rising you know, above the masses. He wants to do something incredible. And so he's singing about that here. He says he's looking at his ears like a martyrdom. Everybody needs to be a part of them. Never be enough from the particle sum. I was born to run. And this is all about how that uh, maybe his years and the martyrdom are a reference uh, to him having lived life and it being a way of him dying when he wasn't enjoying it. So it was a terrible part of his life, but he's made it through and now he's going to achieve the sainthood of success. We could say something like that. That's not the exact explanation, but it is kind of like the explanation of the idea of it. Uh, so he's talking about that. And then he goes back into the run me like a racehorse, break me down and build me up. He wants to succeed. Uh, then finally we get into the bridge and he calls himself or he calls other people, I think, hypocritical, egotistical, um, or maybe that's what they accuse him of being. But he says he doesn't want to be parenthetical. So he doesn't want to be unimportant and kind of off to the side. He doesn't want to be hypothetical. Like if Dan Reynolds succeeded, then this. No, he wants to actually be successful. Uh, working on something that I'm proud of, out of the box and epoxy, which is a kind of glue to the world and the vision we've lost. So he wants to kind of hold things together for other people and help them. I'm an apostrophe, which is a symbol, he says, to remind you that there's more to see. And that could be a reference to when an apostrophe is used to denote ownership of something or possession. So Cliff's pop song professor channel. When you see that Cliff's, you know something else is coming, but also with a contraction like would not. If you have an apostrophe after would, you know that there are going to be more letters coming. Wouldn't. And, you know, so that could be what he's referring to there. Interesting to refer to himself as an apostrophe. Also, as an English teacher, I feel uniquely qualified to explain that one line more than any line I've explained recently. Uh, I'm just a product of the system, a catastrophe, and yet a masterpiece, and I'm half diseased. He actually is diseased, um, but it's interesting here that he's talking about his weaknesses and how they combine uh, with his strengths to make him who he is. So he wouldn't be this success. He wouldn't be who he is. He wouldn't have overcome what he's overcome without having those diseases in the first place. And when I am deceased, at least I go down to the grave and die happily, leaving the body of my soul to be a part of me. I do what it takes. So when he dies... He hopes to have been successful, to have lived a full life, to have done the things that he wanted to do so that he can feel like his life meant something to him personally. And I would say that that is probably a really good way of describing whatever it takes. Throughout his life, he wants to do whatever it takes to accomplish his 
dreams, which the word dream seems awfully fluffy and happy here when maybe his visions of conquest is a more appropriate uh, explanation for an Imagine Dragons song, especially for the songs off of this new, you know, Evolve album. Uh, but yeah, so that's whatever it takes, but I would love to hear what you guys have to think about this and what you have to say about this. If you're going to tell me that this is about Satanism or the Illuminati like so many people have done on previous Imagine Dragons videos, give some proof. We can talk about it. You're probably wrong, but I am always open to proof. Convince me. Uh, the rest of you guys, thanks so much for watching. Do not forget to comment an Imagine Dragons song that you would like to hear me explain next time and upvote people who have, uh, you know, suggested Imagine Dragons songs that you would like to hear as well. You guys are wonderful. Have a great rest of your day.